are filing a federal lawsuit against Nancy Pelosi, William Walker, and Catherine Spindor. We are filing this federal lawsuit because our rights have been violated and they violated the 27th Amendment by fining us for not wearing masks on the House floor. And the reason why we are doing this is because people all over this country are being segregated and discriminated against with masks and vaccines. And it's very important for us as members of Congress to, to stand up against this abuse so that people back at home can do the same thing. Now, being a freshman member of Congress, I was shocked, and I can tell you, shocked, when I first got there on the job on January 3rd to find out that the Speaker of the House built a COVID box, and I call it a COVID box because it is a box up in the upper corner on the second story in the chamber with plexiglass around it, but it doesn't go up to the ceiling, no, it, it only goes halfway, with, with air vents that blow air from the COVID box down to the house floor below. And this is so that Nancy Pelosi can have as many people as possible come to town and vote for her for Speaker of the House because she needed them there. And you know what? We aren't to the age where Star Trek with, you know, beaming people in. These people had to fly into town. They were, they were COVID positive, walk through the Capitol, walk all around. They were around people and they came into the chamber to vote for her for Speaker of the House. So I can tell you for a fact as a witness with my own eyes, Nancy Pelosi, as Speaker of the House, does not care about COVID-19. All she cares about is control, and that is what the mask is. Another thing, we are not um, held to fines anywhere but inside the chamber, which is where cameras are, so that she can make sure that she controls people with masks. And so I find it outrageous that we have such a hypocrite, and I call her the queen of the House of Hypocrites, for bringing people to Washington, D.C. at the very beginning of the 117th Congress, exposing all of us to COVID-19 just so she could have the votes to be Speaker of the House. And then she turns around and finds us when after the CDC and after Joe Biden said it was okay to stop wearing your mask. So this is why I'm filing this federal lawsuit. And another thing is, is this is, it, it is beyond me why we are mistreating people, segregating people, discriminating against people for, for masks and vaccines, which should be a choice. I'm not anti-vaccine. I, I believe in people's freedom to choose to get a vaccine or wear a mask if they want one. And then, we have that picture? Oh, good. One more thing. The same day that I received a fine for not wearing a mask, the Speaker of the House was on the floor not wearing a mask. So where's her fine is what I'm wondering. So this is, this is going to be something that's very important. I hope all of you will follow. And thank you for your time. And at this time, I hand it over to uh, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Marjorie. It's my honor to be here with Congressman Massey and Congresswoman Green. You know, this is about freedom. This is about our rights. Nancy Pelosi, as Speaker of the House, has abused her power. Uh, it's all about power, folks. It's all about mandating something that she has no right to do. Now, she's weaponizing our pay. Article 27 is set by law. It's not set by Nancy Pelosi. Article 1, Section 5, Congress can uh, punish you for disorderly conduct. Is it really disorderly conduct by going against a rule that Ms. Pelosi set as she is Speaker of this entire House? Uh, and let me ask you this, what if Nancy Pelosi mandates that we all ought to dye our hair blue and wear blue socks? Is that going to be mandated? Is that going to be a fine if we don't do that? This is to stop future abuses of power as she has demonstrated here. And as Marjorie said, it's so hypocritical. It's not only the what she did about bringing people in to vote for her, they have to go through the lower chambers to get to the, to the third floor, infecting, potentially infecting all of us. We all remember the picture of her as she was getting her hair done in the height of the pandemic uh, by 
but she did not have a mask. And the, the, the ultimate hypocrisy is the crisis we got at the border. They keep saying, get, get back vaccinated. We let millions of people, a million today, come across the border. We don't know what they have. Do they have the Delta variant? Uh, do they have the Lambda variant? What is that doing to the American people? So this is, a, uh, this is something that we feel strong about. I applaud Congresswoman Green and Congressman Massey for having the backbone to stand up and to say we're not taking it anymore and we don't want this to happen uh, to future elected members of Congress and it's time to stand up. It's time to protect our freedom in this country. Thank you. I call on Congressman Massey. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph and Marjorie. I think Marjorie summed it up well. You could sum up this whole case in two pictures. These are on the same day in the same chamber. This is Marjorie and Ralph and I. This is Nancy Pelosi. She deducted money from our paychecks. Why? Because we did exactly what she did. We went in there without a mask on. Now there was a rule and the Constitution says that each chamber shall make its own rules. And we voted on it. Yeah, we didn't carry the day. We lost that vote. But then Nancy Pelosi started changing that rule. The Constitution does not say the Speaker can make any rules she wants on any given day, depending on how she feels when she wakes up. No, the chambers, the houses make their own rules. But she started modifying this rule. And then she started down a path that too many people, too many, many tyrants across this country, too many, many dictators, many monarchs have started down. She started to try to go down the path of mandatory vaccines. Now, before you all get started and say, oh, he's anti-vaccine, vaccine choice is not anti-vax. But she said shortly before we made our stand on the floor, she said, everybody has to wear a mask until everybody gets vaccinated. That's when I realized if we don't take the stand here, they're going to run over us, but not just us. Listen, this case, yes, the plaintiffs are Ralph Norman, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Thomas Massey versus Nancy Pelosi and two administrators in this chamber. But this fight is bigger than that. This fight is about the people who are going to work and don't have time to fight. They just want to get on with their lives. But they're being told after, and many of them have taken their vaccines and they're being told, oh, we're going to put masks on your kids now. When they come back to work or to school, they're going to have to wear the, the face garment, the cloth ones that don't even, aren't even proven to do anything. So this fight is about making sure that those rules aren't enforced across this country unfairly without laws. Nancy Pelosi did this by edict. There is no law. She changed this rule on her own. She did it unconstitutionally, just like many of these edicts that come from governors, like my own governor in Kentucky. Many of these edicts have never been voted on. They're unconstitutional. In this case, Nancy Pelosi's fine against us for not wearing a mask violates the 27th Amendment. Clear, plain, simple reading of that amendment to the Constitution shows that. But she goes even further. She's trying to compel our speech. And how do we know this mask rule was just about speech? Because as soon as you walk off the floor you can, and the cameras can't see you, you can take off the mask. And that's the way it was, and Democrats were doing it too. It's all about theater. There was only two places they really ever tried to enforce the mask rule, in committees and in the chamber. Why? That's the only two places there are cameras. So folks, we are here today, not because of $500 in fines, but because the American people need somebody to fight, and they're tired of people who won't fight, and we are going to fight, and we have filed this case this morning with that, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, lead attorney in this, Chris Weiss. Good morning. Um, uh, along with Tom Brown and Aaron Siri and his law firm, we filed this matter in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly about the claims and allow Tom and Aaron each to uh, offer their thoughts. There are four claims in this lawsuit. The first one, as has been alluded to this morning, is the 27th Amendment, which provides a relevant part, um, and I hope you'll allow me to read this. Um, it says that uh, no law bearing the compensation for the services of senators or representatives shall take effect until the election of representatives shall have intervened. 
The rules in question were passed in the 117th Congress. No election has intervened, and yet the compensation of these members is being reduced in violation of the 27th Amendment. The count two uh, provides that each house may punish its members for disorderly behavior. That was a term that was defined at common law when the Constitution was adopted. That's in Article One, Section 5. And again, we've got video of, of the days that this uh, occurred. There was no disruption in the House proceedings, and so there was no disorderly behavior. Count three is in Article One, Section 6 and Section 7, claim that says the compensation shall be set according to law, and a House resolution is not law. And so again, we've got another violation of the U.S. Constitution. And finally, count four is a First Amendment claim dealing with uh, compelled symbolic speech and punishment uh, for engaging in symbolic speech, uh, all of which is protected under the First Amendment, particularly under these circumstances. And we're happy to talk in detail and take questions on the claims themselves, but I'd like to turn this over to, to my co-counsel, Tom Bruns, at this point, to offer some of his thoughts. So Chris gave you a, a nice summary of the legal issues in the case, and the beauty of this case is the simplicity of the facts, which frankly are not in dispute. We have pictures, we have video, okay? And, and then the law is very plain and simple, and I love this background here, this backdrop, because that's why I'm here, and I know that's why these Congress folks are here. It's the rule of law. The rule of law is under assault in this country, and there are a whole lot of people who believe that some are above the law, but they're not. The beauty of our system is that even the third-ranking political leader has limits on her power. And, and some debates, some issues have been taken off the table. The 27th Amendment takes certain issues off the table. The First Amendment takes certain issues off the table. So we don't get to debate the wisdom of finding these good people because they wouldn't engage in the majority's uh, symbolic speech. You can't do it. And that's why we're here. And ultimately, this, this, these issues are going to get decided in the courts because we live in a republic, and God bless that we do. Because at the end of the day, it is not up to one elected official to change the law. We're here to enforce it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm not sure there's a lot more to say. I, I, I would like to think that this won't be reported as a partisan issue, but I, it unfortunately probably will be, though it shouldn't. Everybody should understand that our elected representatives should not be able to have pressure applied to them unduly by one of the other parties. Their compensation shouldn't be held hostage to what the majority in the chamber views are. And that's exactly what happened here. That shouldn't happen irrespective of who's in power. And this lawsuit is intended to assure that that doesn't happen. Not in this case, and not in the future. Thank you. Well, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Marjorie's going to add one more thing, and then we'll take your questions. I just wanted to add one more thing. When we had our hearings uh, with the House Ethics Committee, the first thing I stated to the committee, is, which is five Democrats and five Republicans, is I said to four of the five Democrats on the committee, that they had signed their name on a resolution to expel me from Congress that had that did not say I had broken a law or that I had done anything wrong. It just says that I should be expelled from Congress. Four out of the five Democrat members on the House Ethics Committee already had their name on that resolution. I asked them to recuse themselves. After all, they are on the Ethics Committee and you would think it would be ethical for them to recuse themselves, and they refused. So you see, this is political. It's always political, and that's the way the Democrats are running things. And so I just wanted to add that in and make sure that's done. Thank you. Anybody have questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> So his question was, what does it mean that a, a member of Congress has to file a federal lawsuit to get uh, a change of the rules? But the problem is that there's a violation of the Constitution. We're not debating House rules in this court proceeding. We're debating the Constitution. We just want the Constitution applied. And she has changed the rules, for instance. And as I said before, the Constitution says each house shall make the rules of its proceedings. It does not say the speaker shall. And there's no other authority here to appeal this to. It has to go to the courts, un unfortunately. 
Yes. Hi. Um, so some judges have upheld things like vaccine mandates, for example, at Indiana University. Is there something different about your situation? It's not a vaccine mandate. It was a rule that required a mask in Congress. So there was no requirement to be having a vaccine. Though, I will note that the rule didn't uh, provide that those who have immunity, meaning those who had COVID, didn't have to wear a mask. It didn't account for that science. And in fact, even those who had vaccines at times have to wear a mask as well. So it didn't account for that science either. He, make, he makes a great point that needs to be made, and, and we, it's a footnote, or it's noted in the lawsuit that the CDC said if you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask, but she continued on with that. But furthermore, the CDC refuses to ignore natural immunity that's been conferred to those who've already been infected. And we're not in any way, shape, or form advocating that you should get infected instead of taking the vaccine. But science dictates that if you're gonna require immunity, you have to acknowledge natural immunity as well. And it was clear she was going down the path of requiring vaccines for every member of Congress. You can go look at her own words four days before we went to the floor without our masks. She said, until everybody here gets vaccinated. She did not say, until everybody here has immunity. So again, that is, it's become sort of a religion or something political, and it's a denial of science. Um, you've been among the loudest voices challenging the CDC. Um, are you, you know, you raise important questions, but are you concerned that your sort of this constant drumbeat and your opposition to um, to the the Dr. Fauci others that it might be leading to vaccine hesitancy in your community? Right now in Kentucky, uh, less than uh, fifty percent of the state is vaccinated. Well, nobody should take advice from a bureaucrat or a politician. And uh, the longer they've been in D.C., the less you should trust them. OK, so you can tell me where that puts Dr. Fauci on the scale. You should go talk to a doctor, a fam your family doctor, somebody that's going to be responsible for caring for you, not just 30 minutes after the vaccine is administered, but 30, 30 days or three years after the vaccine is administered. Go get advice from a medical professional that you know. Don't take it from me, don't take it from any of us. And that's the message that I leave on that. You all have, I, you know, the real message here is, what's, what's next for Ms. Pelosi? If, if she's not challenged here, what, what other edict can she pass? It's not about getting the vaccine or not getting the vaccine. I and mean, that's, that's called freedom for each American to choose themselves. This is about stopping an abuse of power that has been a pattern throughout the speakership of uh, Ms. Pelosi. And uh, if not now, when? When do we when, when do we challenge it? And so that's why I'm so excited about this lawsuit. Do I like lawsuits? No. But there is a time to fight. There is a time to challenge. And now is that time. And I'm just glad yeah, my I two colleagues were, were willing to do so. Okay. I'd like to address the issue about misinformation. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in the people and them being able to make up their own mind because I believe the people are smarter than anyone gives them credit. And, you know, you want to talk about misinformation, I think we should hold our social media accountable because they are not in charge of deciding which information should be distributed, which information should not be distributed. As a matter of fact, there's people that have a lot of stories to tell about their experience. Uh, they may have had side effects and, and bad experiences with the vaccine, but yet their stories are canceled and their stories are not heard in the media. So I challenge you, the media, who has the information, you guys hold the microphone and the pen in hand to distribute information. I challenge you to, to tell those stories. And then I also challenge you to tell the stories and ask for investigations of why over 6,000 people have been reported to have died on, on for the VAERS system on the CDC. So you see, everyone has a right to all information, not just some information, and you can't point your finger at any of us and say that we're spreading around misinformation when Dr. Fauci is the one that has switched back and forth and back and forth on what his advice is. And by the way, none of us elected that man to make decisions on how our country should be run, how our businesses should be run, and how our children should be treated in the schools that we pay taxes for them to be educated in. 
So do not ask us and point fingers at us on misinformation when you yourself are the ones that are in charge of the, of the information at hand. Challenge people, challenge Facebook, Twitter, and say, why? Why are you censoring some stories and then telling others? Challenge the VAR system, challenge CDC. Why are these deaths not being investigated? Let people make up their own mind. This is America, where we're supposed to be free. At least we think we are. And for that, um, I'll, I'm gonna wrap this up. What, this is, well, what okay, do, what? What do, you, uh, what do you attribute then to there being uh, a large amount of vaccine hesitancy in red states among white Republican men specifically? I, I, I don't do race, ma'am. I'm not gonna play that game, just so you know. I think, that's, I think that is a ridiculous road to go down here. We're talking about a virus that doesn't target skin color. We're talking about a virus that makes people sick and people have died. We're also talking about people having the ability to choose. It is their right to choose. And there's, you know, you never want to talk about the, I don't know, tens of millions, what is it, it's over 30 million people that have tested positive for COVID, COVID and survived. Let's talk to those people. That's immunity also. That's called natural herd immunity. And why, why are they not allowed to have that? Why is it one way and not the other? Why does the governor of Quant Governor of New York, Cuomo, think he can go up to people's doors, drag them out of the house, put them in a car, and take them to get a shot, because that's what he said. Why do you have cities out in California saying that if, if someone uh, refuses to wear a mask, they have to wear a sticker saying whether they're vaccinated or not? Let's talk about segregation and discrimination. Those are the issues. And our governor in Kentucky has engendered no trust by sending state troopers to churches to write down license plate numbers. And then he wants people's trust after that? I don't think so. But listen, as our attorney said, the facts really aren't in dispute in this case. I want to leave you with two things. The fact, there's video of everything that happened that day that we were fine. You can go back and check it. Nancy Pelosi went without a mask too. We think we're going to prevail in this case. We think it's going to be a groundbreaking decision on a constitutional issue that frankly hasn't been tested. But this case is much more than that. We are fighting not because the litigants, the plaintiffs, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Ralph Norman, and Thomas Massey have been fined $500. And by the way, the prime defendant is Nancy Pelosi. We are taking on this fight for Americans. We're taking on this fight for people who have been abused by their governors, by their mayors, by any of the miniature tyrants that exist across this country who are trying to do what Nancy Pelosi has done. She is the queen of hypocrisy. And we're standing up to her today, and that is why we have filed this lawsuit. And I'll make a copy of it available to anybody who wants it. It was filed. It's already been filed in the court. And uh, great to have you here today. Thank you.